Good morning. How the devil are you doing this fine day? Me? I'm unnervingly polite and capably violent. I'm no, no either of those things, actually. I stole that from Henry Rollins, uh, but thanks for asking anyway. Uh, we've got a packed show for you today, uh, in, including news that was literally coming in as we started the show. Um, so let's roll that intro and get this show on the road. <laughs> Welcome to The Breakfast Show. I'm your host, Mark Anthony. It's Thursday, the 5th of August, and as that smooth-talking guy just said, welcome to The Breakfast Show. I am your host, Mark Anthony. Uh, In today's show, there is yet another mental health sticking plaster for the construction and demolition industry. Materials prices are set to rise 10% further over the next 12 months and Caterpillar has unveiled its latest demolition pulverizers. If you've got any comments about those uh, those items or comments about any of those items then please post them in the uh, the chat and we'll get to them just as soon as we can. But first let's check out which celebrities will be blowing out the candles and eating the birthday cake today. <laughs> And it's many happy returns to the Elephant Man, Joseph Merrick, born on this day in 1862, before packing his trunk permanently just 28 years later. Uh, Happy birthday also to film director John Huston and to the first man to set foot on the moon, Neil Armstrong. Uh, To gender-bending singer Pete Burns. Uh, Burns was actually singer with a band, Dead or Alive. Uh, Sadly, Burns himself is now undeniably dead. Uh, And a happy heavenly birthday also to MCA of the Beastie Boys, who is also no longer with us. A happy uh, birthday to them each, each and every one of them. If you knew that a specific element of your working practice was causing repeated injuries or even deaths, what would you do? Would you look to eliminate that working practice to avoid a repeat of those injuries and fatalities? Or would you just have an ambulance on constant standby, ready to sort out those inevitable casualties? I ask because yesterday brought news of yet another sticking plaster solution to the mental health pandemic that continues to grip the UK construction and demolition industry. That sticking plaster apparently is a consistent approach to supporting construction workers' mental health. That's the goal of a new initiative by uh, led by the Construction Leadership Council, the CLC, and the Construction Industry Training Board, uh, CITB. That new initiative coincides with the publication of a new study by the CITB that underlines the sheer scale of the issue. The risk of suicide among site, some site-based workers is three times the national average. And a Chartered Institute of Building report found that 26% of construction workers who responded to their survey had experienced suicidal thoughts. The CITB's new research highlights a growing number of good initiatives, but finds that their impact is currently held back by the lack of a coherent aim and message. There is a range of different mental health and well-being support available available from industry professional bodies, charities and employers. However, Evidence of the effect and effectiveness of that support is limited. Well, pardon my French, but no shit. While the likes of gymnast Simone Biles and footballer Tyrone Mings have raised public awareness of mental health issues, the fact that young and male uh, young male construction workers are taking their own lives in an unprecedented I'm going to do all that, but again, while the likes of gymnast Simone Biles and footballer Tyrone Mings have raised public awareness of mental health issues, the fact that young and male construction workers are taking their lives at an unprecedented rate should not be a surprise to anyone in this sector. This is not news. It's self-evident. So how precisely is a coherent message supposed to help a young worker who is working miles from his family and his support network? who is uncertain where his next pay, his next pay packet may come from, who has zero job security, who is considered somehow weak and less manly if he shows even an ounce of emotion, 
Going back to my original point, the solution to a gaping hole in a roof is not to have a team of par paramedics gathered far below. The solution is fixing the hole or devising a working method that doesn't require workers to be near the hole in the first place. Now, I'm sure that the hearts of the CLC and the CITB are in the right place. Although identifying a lack of a coherent aim and message sounds like it was written by a PR company and not a mental health expert. That being said, I'm sure that this and other initiatives are not just box ticking exercises. But prevention is and always will be better than cure. And being better equipped to deal with the casualties will always be a poor substitute for preventing the creation of those casualties in the first place. Um, if you check in the chat, um, you will find links to a copy of that CITB report. Uh, go check it out and, well, let me know what you think. I'd love to, love to get your feedback on that. The Miller GT series heralds a new era of unrivaled power and cutting-edge intelligent coupler technology, increasing job site safety, machine versatility and productivity. It's the added versatility that you need at the value you can afford. To find out more, visit millergroundbreaking.com. Surveyors are braced for a further 10% rise in materials prices over the next 12 months as the construction supply chain struggles to keep up with increasing workloads. That's according to a report today on news portal uh, Construction Inquirer. A shortage of staff was also flagged as a major problem in the latest RICS construction and infrastructure survey for uh, quarter two of 2021. The survey found 82% of respondents experienced a shortage of materials, up from 57% previously. Meanwhile, the cost of materials is expected to increase by nearly 10% over the next 12 months, ahead of the predicted 7% growth. An, RA, uh, an RICS spokesperson said, infrastructure and private house building are likely to remain the most buoyant areas of the industry, but it is abundantly clear that a couple of issues present big challenges. Most notably at this point, the availability of building materials stands out as a key problem. But almost as significantly, labour and skills are increasingly being cited as obstacles for businesses looking to build out existing co commitments or embark on new projects. Unsurprisingly, against this backdrop, some concern is being expressed about rising construction costs. The mighty Caterpillar has added three new models to its lineup of rotating primary pulverizers, the P318, P324, and P332, and three new fixed secondary models, the P218, 224, and 232. Uh, both pulverizer series are designed to fit excavators in the 18 to 50 ton operating weight class. The new pulverizer design is built around the same speed booster technology found in CAT multiprocessors. This feature closes the jaw when there is no load. The jaw uh, when the jaw comes into contact with material, the speed, burster, speed booster hydraulic valve automatically switches to power mode for maximum power, quickly shattering concrete. Both new pulverizer series feature bolt-on wear components that can be quickly replaced in the field with no hard face welding required for maintenance. Uh, CAT asset tracking is available for quick attachment, locating, security and fleet management. Um, I will post a link to uh, more details of those just as soon as the show is over. Um, but let's look at who's buying equipment right now. Word reaches us that the fine folks up at Skilling's Crushing Company have added a second Epiroc HB3100 IPS to their hydraulic breaker fleet. The new 3100 kilo, kilogram breaker comes with a Contilube automatic lubrication system and has already been fitted to a Liebherr 934 excavator, as you can see in the picture there. The, the breaker and the excavator are now working near Glasgow. 
So congratulations to the team at Skillings and also to the Hammerman himself, Lester Spencer at Trojan Plant Equipment, who supplied the breaker. Sticking with Scotland, a company called Crucible Al Alba has set aside 25 million Scottish pounds, which are exactly the same as English pounds, only battered and deep fried. Uh, and they've set that aside for the construction of a new mixed use development in Dundee. The development at Green Market will include offices, residential space, cafes and restaurants and retail space as well. Uh, Ogilvy Construction is among those bidding for the new build element of the works. But first, a number of existing buildings will need to be removed from the site. You can find out more about this project lead and many more just like it over at buildersconference.co. UK. Sorry to interrupt the guy with the funny glasses, but if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button as it helps our channel. Or better still, share this video with a friend or a colleague. Thank you. Right, back to Beardy. I will roll the outro in just a second, uh, but for, uh, and then I'll hop over into the chat to see what everyone's talking about today, see what's cooking today. Uh, but I also wanted to say a very quick thank you uh, for the surprisingly large number of people that took part in yesterday's No Agenda show over on Instagram. It really was a bit of a suck it and see show to gauge the appetite for a show of that nature. But based on the number of people that took part and the level of feedback uh, that we received, I will be repeating that exercise hopefully at noon on Wednesday next week. Uh, so hopefully you can pop over and see us on Instagram. Um, I will also be back here same time, same place on the morrow for more of this old stuff and nonsense. But until then, have a great day. Stay safe. Look after yourself, your family, your friends and your colleagues. And thanks for watching. All the best.